Hello, this is Dr. Allaire from the University of Houston downtown, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your science notebook for science methods, uh, specifically for science methods EED 3315. Um, science notebooks, I think, are great tools for everybody to use for, for science classes involving all ages. Um, I think it's particularly good for um, pre-service teachers, uh, again, all, so students of all ages, um, because it gives you a dedicated place to put all of your science materials, um, whether those are, um, you know, labs, uh, data that you're collecting during labs, um, reflections, journal entries, questions that you're answering, uh, test prep or quizzes and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a singular place that you can put it. Of course, using it with pre-service teachers, there's a couple of other factors to keep in mind. Uh, again, obviously, you know, it's a great place to keep everything for our EED 3315 Science and Methods course. Um, but of course, we are also modeling a great practice for you to use in your own classroom, um, one that I would highly recommend that you adopt. Um, but then finally, uh, after all is said and done, you're going to be taking the core subjects test to get your teacher certification. So what this also does is it gives you a dedicated place to put all of your science materials so that when it comes time to study for that core subjects test, you don't have to go scrambling all over the place to find it. Everything is in your notebook. So we're going to walk through uh, a couple of things that you need to do to set this up. Um, first things first, you need a notebook. So I've got two notebooks here, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, I'm fine with either a composition book or a spiral bound notebook. Please make sure that, however, if you get a single uh, uh, a spiral notebook, it's going to be a single subject notebook, okay? And that's going to become a little bit clearer right away. Um, you can see that both of these are 100 sheets, so I think that should be plenty of room for us uh, when uh, as we go through. We're going to try our best to fill it up, okay? But 100 sheets should be uh, really, really good about uh, for, for uh, the amount of stuff that we're going to be doing. So again, composition book is fine. Uh, a spiral notebook is fine. I'm a, um, a big fan of composition books. Um, I think that they're just, you know, they're just super cool looking. Um, I'm, you know, they're rugged, they're sturdy. Um, not that a spiral notebook isn't rugged or sturdy, um, but, uh, you know, I think that they are just, you know, great to use for all purposes. Uh, one of the things that you might want to do, I'm not going to do it right this minute, but uh, you know, you might want to get yourself a nice big Sharpie or, or something and, uh, and just put somewhere across the top or on the, you know, somewhere on the cover uh, the, the course number. So EED 3315, uh, your name, uh, science methods. So that way when you see this sitting there or somebody else sees this sitting there, it's very clear uh, what this book is uh, you know, what this book is, is for. Okay. So we're going to open up our science notebook. Ah, there you go. That new notebook smell. Okay. And so the first thing that we're going to do, so the other thing that you need, uh, to start doing this is you need, of course, a pen. Um, you can go ahead and get fancy if you want to. Um, you know, you can get lots of different colors. I'm going to keep things simple for this video. I'm just going to use a regular blue pen. Uh, regular blue ballpoint pen, but again, you're welcome to make it as colorful and as creative as you want. I think that's awesome. Um, one thing that I def I recommend not using for, for writing in there are, are highlighters. Um, highlighters are great for after the fact, of course, if you want to draw your eye to something and to emphasize something as you're uh, doing things in your notebook. Um, but for our purposes in this video, writing in the um, page numbers and, and titling some of the things. Highlighters are not the best because they can be really difficult to see sometimes and of course over time they will fade. So I'm just going to put these off to the side. Alright, so to make sure that we focus on things I'm just going to go ahead and delete that part of our video so now you don't have to deal with seeing my face on here. We can focus on our notebook. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to number the pages. Okay, we're going to use all of the pages or at least number all of the pages that are in here. Okay, so I'm going to put in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to make this nice and big so that there is no way I can miss this. This is page 
one, okay, in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to flip the page over. So now I'm on the back of what we called page one, and I'm going to put now in the upper left-hand corner a two. So yes, we are going to be using pages back to back, okay? We want to maximize the amount of space that we have in our notebook. So the facing page is now going to be page number three. The back of page three becomes page four, and so on and so on. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to number the first 20 pages. So that's page six, page seven. Now, why are we numbering the pages front and back? Again, we want to maximize the amount of space that we have in our notebooks. I know 100 pages sounds like a lot, but as we start to fill it up with handouts and lab reports, reflections, journal entries, and so on, that space is going to fill up really, really quickly. Now, I, again, I can't guarantee that we are going to fill up all of the pages in our notebook, but we sure are going to try. We're going we're gonna to give it the old college try, as, as they sometimes say. So here's page 17. 18, 19, and 20. So one of the things that you should do after this is done, after this video is done, is you should continue to number the pages in your notebook. Now you may not need to number all of them right away. I would say, you know, if you can number up to page 50, I think you'll be pretty in pretty good shape for the time being. Um, one thing I do want to mention here, uh, ju just, you know, a point of clarification, um, you know, different composition books, you know, some of them are wide ruled, some of them are college ruled, um, and what that, what that is, is it's a difference in the amount of space between the lines. Now, um, that's not a big deal for our purposes, so I don't want you stressing wide ruled versus college ruled, okay? I'm, I'm okay with either one. Okay, so we're going to go back to page one, and here we are back at page one, and um, it's going to be really, again, we're going to be filling our notebook so full of stuff, it's going to be very important for us to stay organized. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the first 10 pages as our table of contents. So again, what I'm going to do is up at the top, I'm going to put in nice big letters, table of contents. And I'm going to do that on page 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So pages 1 through 10 are going to be our table of contents. So I'm just going to take some time here. I know that this is not the most exciting part of the video. In fact, if you want to uh, zip ahead to where I finish this, that's fine with me. Okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and label this. Now again, why do we need so much space for our table of contents? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. One is that different people write in different ways. Some people write really big, some people write small, some people skip lines as they enter things into their table of contents. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have enough room to accommodate just about everyone. Um, that might be uh, that are that's using their science notebook. So uh, again, that's that's one reason. Are we, you know, for for having so much space dedicated to our table of contents? Uh, a second reason why we have so much space for our table of contents.
as I was saying, a second reason why we want so much room for our table of contents is, again, we're going to be doing a lot of different things in this course. Uh, we're going to be having discussions. We are going to be doing reflections for our readings. We're going to be doing labs and various activities. And everything that we do in this course is going to go into this notebook. Uh, and that, of course, includes taking notes on what we do in class. So uh, we, again, want to make sure that we have lots of room. And I think that, you know, 10 full pages for our table of contents is, is pretty good. Um, a third reason why, uh, a, another reason why the table of contents is really important is, of course, as we start putting more and more things in here, um, it could get messy. And the table of contents is going to help us to stay organized. Um, and that's why it's going to be very important for you to keep an up-to-date table of contents. Um, because that way, if you're trying to find something, for instance, like, uh, you know, if we are doing some review questions and you need to go back to, uh, to something earlier, you know, instead of trying to flip through your entire notebook and find that page, you can just go through your table of contents find the page number and go right to it. And this is also why it's going to be very important for you to finish numbering your pages in your, in your notebook. So that way everything works together to keep you organized. Finally, um, is that the table of contents is going to serve as your evidence um, of your science notebook. We have four notebook checks during the semester. And so what you're going to do is you are going to uh, use your phone or something similar to take a picture or use something like cam scanner to uh, take a picture of your, uh, your notebook, just of the table of contents, however filled it might be, and you're going to upload that to Blackboard. And again, that's going to be your evidence of your, um, of your notebook. So, um, the last thing that we're going to do together in this video to set up our table of contents, and I hope I'm not going to get too meta with this, is we're going to put our first entry in. And so our first entry, I'm going to put page 1 through 10, table of contents. So as we go through the semester, you're going to add things in. You're going to put the page number, you're going to put the title or whatever it is. So for instance, um, if you watch a video on me reading a, a piece of children's literature and you are uh, going to be tasked with coming up with uh, three possible science lessons from that piece of literature, uh, you might put, you know, page 23, the name of the book, uh, and then, you know, something else in there uh, letting you know what that is, you know, uh, science lessons from um, Eric Carle's the, the Tiny Seed, okay, or something like that. Uh, when you do a reflection, you would put the page number and reflection one, uh, reflection two, reflection three, and so on. So you're going to be filling this up. And again, what you'll do is each time we have a notebook check, you're going to get your phone and you're going to take a picture and of the table of contents and you're going to upload that to Blackboard. So uh, this was uh, our video setting up our notebook. Uh, I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, you, of course, can drop me an email or send me a message through Remind. All right. Thanks so much.